Hashtag her story, Saxony and its female academics. Saxony's universities and colleges are among the oldest in Germany. Yet without female involvement, their ongoing history would be inconceivable, and not just today and tomorrow, but also yesterday. For nearly 150 years, women in search of education have sought access to the four universities and numerous colleges in Saxony, including in times when they were barred from higher education. However, the official introduction of equal rights for women didn't bring about genuine equality in the university life for many long years. Women still had to struggle for a place in higher education, research and teaching in the face of serious reservations, prejudice and resistance. The exhibition Hashtag Her Story pays tribute to outstanding female academics and researchers from the higher education sector in Saxony past and present, making them ambassadors of women's demand for education in this region and beyond. The lives and careers of the women portrayed here are academic success stories rooted in Saxony. Hashtag Her Story tells of females' thirst for knowledge, determination and courage. Learn about the mathematician who risked her life exploring the desert of Peru, the doctor who was the first woman in Germany to be allowed to sit the state examination in medicine, the virtuoso ballerina who reinvented the zeitgeist with her style of dance, and the woman with a doctorate in engineering who made it to the boardroom of Volkswagen. Many of the stories recounted here concern women who were quite simply among the very first female undergraduates, postgraduates, lecturers, professors and even rectors at universities and colleges. Their biographies are as colourful and flamboyant as Saxony's higher education sector. And they indicate that women don't tend to study particular subjects. These pioneers, inventors and creators have contributed to Saxony's educational progress across the board, whether in mathematics, chemistry and physics, economics and politics, or dance, painting and music. Their stories are a source of inspiration and courage for the future. Female students Studying remained a man's world until the early 20th century. Even in Saxony, the many long-standing universities, colleges and art academies were long loath to admit women. One early exception was Leipzig Conservatory of Music, which accepted talented female musicians immediately after it had been founded by Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi in 1843. The issue of women in higher education became the subject of intellectual debate in the German Empire around the turn of the century. Some detractors actually claimed that women lacked the ability to study. After protracted negotiations and the occasional admission of female guest students, on the 10th of April 1906 a law was passed in Saxony allowing women to enter higher education. That same month, the first 27 female students enrolled at the University of Leipzig, and in 1907 women first entered Dresden College of Technology. Even so, women still remained few and far between in lecture halls for many years to come. Midweider College of Technology rejected a female applicant in 1908, and not until 1944 did the first woman manage to enrol there. Formal equality didn't by any means equate to real equal opportunities in everyday higher education. At universities and colleges in Saxony too, Equality had to be repeatedly demanded in the 20th century. Initially only enrolled in small numbers, women were then forced out of academia under the Nazis. During the era of East Germany, the German Democratic Republic, women were supported for political and ideological reasons. The numerous successful biographies of female students tell a different story of their experiences of the Saxon higher education sector, which less than 120 years ago was almost completely male-dominated. Hope Bridges Adams, Doctor and Pacifist Hope Bridges Adams, whose life was made into a film, was one of Germany's first scientifically trained female doctors. 
Despite many bureaucratic hurdles, in 1880 she became the first woman in Germany to sit and pass the state exam in medicine in Leipzig. Hope Bridges Adams was born on the 16th of December 1855 in Halliford, near London. After graduating from Bedford College, in 1873 she moved to Dresden with her mother. Three years later, she applied to study medicine in Leipzig, but was only accepted as a guest student, for women weren't yet allowed to enter higher education. Taking the state examination initially seemed impossible, but she was finally allowed to do so following the intercession of her professors. Even so, she was refused permission to exercise the profession of doctor. Her application to study for a PhD was also turned down by Leipzig University, which is why she took her doctoral degree in Bern. Only 20 years later was her Leipzig exam officially recognised in the German Empire in 1904. By this time, she had spent many years working as a doctor in the surgery shared by her husband and her Leipzig classmate Otto Walter in Frankfurt, albeit without a license. When Hope Bridges Adams caught tuberculosis in 1886, she moved with her husband and two children to the Black Forest, where after convalescence she opened a sanatorium for lung patients in Nordrach. It was there that she met her second husband, a doctor called Karl Lehmann, with whom she opened a surgery in Munich. The Lehmanns became very politically active and were in touch with the likes of August Bebel, Clara Zetkin and Wilhelm Liebknecht. Hope Bridges Adams wrote many educational books devoted to women's health. She campaigned to reform the health system and to liberalise the ban on abortions. After the outbreak of war in 1914, she became an outspoken pacifist. On the 10th of October 1916, she died in Munich, aged 60. Irena Rutia Rabinovich, academy graduate and successful artist. In the early 20th century, art was a man's affair. In 1919, Irena Rabinovich became one of the first women to be enrolled at Dresden State Art Academy. Persecuted by the Nazis for her Jewish roots, after 1945 she became one of the most esteemed artists in East Germany. Irena Rabinovich was born into a well-to-do Polish-Jewish family. Her artistic talent was nurtured when she was still a young girl. After moving with her family to Dresden, she continued attending private art classes. Her application to Dresden State Art Academy dated the 29th of September 1919, contained 20 drawings. Several associations of female artists had already campaigned since 1906 in vain for women to be admitted to Dresden State Art Academy. Only at the start of the 1919 winter semester were three women enrolled, one of them being Irena Rabinovich. Her prominent fellow students included Otto Dix, Peter August Bergstiegel, Otto Griebel and Hubert Rutter, whom she married in 1921. After graduating, Irena Rutter Rabinovich became a freelance artist and painted portraits of many of her colleagues. When the Nazis came to power, this marked the start of a period of persecution for Irena Rutter Rabinovich lasting several years. Being a half-Jew, she was no longer allowed to practice her profession from 1934. Her husband was also banned from working because he refused to divorce his wife. In 1943, Irena was forced to work in a cardboard factory. Her planned deportation to Theresienstadt concentration camp was only prevented by the air raid on Dresden on the 13th of February 1945. Although her husband didn't survive the torture of persecution, Ruta Rabinovich was able to continue her artistic career after the war. In December 1945, her paintings were displayed at Dresden State Art Academy alongside works by other famous artists from the city, such as Josef Hegenbart, Wilhelm Rudolf and Eva Schuleknabe in the exhibition Free Artists. Her talent was subsequently displayed at many other exhibitions in East Germany. 
Irena Ruta Rabinovich died in Dresden in 1979. Mary Hegler Karras, educated factory owner and publisher. As a child, Mary Hegler was fascinated by her father's zinc production. Her thirst for knowledge took her from her native Illinois to Freiberg Mining Academy, becoming the first woman to enroll there. At the age of just 25, Mary Hagler became a factory manager. Mary Hagler was born in Lasalle in the USA in 1861 as the first of ten children of German immigrants. When she was still a young girl, she would follow her father to the smelting furnaces in his zinc factory. Mary's parents supported their daughter's talent and interests and encouraged her to study chemistry. In 1882, Mary Hagler became the first female graduate of the University of Michigan, where she was awarded a bachelor's degree. But Mary Hagler wanted to learn more. In 1885, she moved to Freiberg in Saxony in order to study. She already had ties to Freiberg Mining Academy, for her grandfather Julius Weisbach, 1806-1871, had once taught there as a professor of mathematics, physics and mechanics. However, despite earning top grades in all subjects, Mary Hagler wasn't allowed to formally graduate because she was a woman. In 1886, she returned to La Salle, where she took charge of the zinc factory of her father, who was increasingly focusing on his new firm, the Open Court Publishing Company, which specialised in journals on the humanities, philosophy and religion. In 1888, Mary Hagler married the publishing house's editor-in-chief Paul Carras, 1852 to 1919, and they went on to have six children. They also financed the construction of a school in La Salle. Following the death of her husband, Mary Hagler Carras began editing the journals The Open Court and The Monist. She died in 1936 after a short illness. At Freiberg Mining Academy, the Mary Hagler Karras Fellowship has been awarded in memory of the talented scientist since 2012 to support female postdoctoral researchers. Maria Reicher, mathematician and desert explorer. Maria Reicher risked her life for her major research project. At the age of 52, she had herself tied to the skids of a helicopter in order to photograph the famous Nazca lines in Peru from the air. Her scientific career began at Dresden College of Technology. From a young age, Maria Reicher was fascinated by the travelogues in her father's library. After graduating from high school, she enrolled at Dresden College of Technology. She studied mathematics, physics, geography, philosophy and teacher training and graduated in 1928. However, being a supply teacher wasn't enough for Maria Reicher. In search of more, she applied for a job as a private tutor for the children of the German consul in the city of Cusco in Peru. She had long been fascinated by the ancient cultures of South America. While helping to restore historical textiles at the National Museum in Lima, the capital of Peru, Maria Reicher first heard about the famous Nazca lines discovered in 1924. Vast images in the desert sand up to 20 kilometers long. In 1941, equipped with a compass and a measuring tape, Maria Reicher set off into the desert for the first time to sketch the lines. It turned out that they actually depicted figures such as spiders, monkeys and birds. In 1950, Maria Reicher took up residence in an isolated austere hut in the desert to devote herself entirely to studying the enigmatic drawings. Her bold aerial photographs made Maria Reicher world famous. Even when she was confined to a wheelchair, she continued to dedicate herself to her work, partly with the support of her partner, Amy Meredith. Maria Reicher conjectured that the lines made up a sort of calendar, the figures representing constellations. After the Nazca line to become a tourist attraction in the 1970s, Maria Reicher campaigned for them to be inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1994. Dresden University of Technology 
has introduced the Maria Reicher program to support junior female academics working towards a professorship. Lilia Skala Zofia, architect and actress. Lilia Skala Zofia from Austria had originally wanted to become an architect, and she went down in the history of Dresden College of Technology as one of its first female architecture graduates. But then everything changed, and she conquered Broadway as a successful actress. Lilia Zofer was born in Vienna in 1896. Her career aspiration was unusual for a woman in the early 20th century. She enrolled on a degree course in architecture at Dresden College of Technology, graduating in 1920 with distinction. Back in Vienna, Lilia Zofer became the first woman to join the Austrian Chamber of Engineers and Architects. The successful architect mixed with artists and met the famous theatre and film director Max Reinhardt, 1873-1943. He discovered Lilia's great acting talent, gave her lessons, and finally asked her to join his team. Between 1931 and 1936, she appeared in six German and Austrian feature films. After the annexation of Austria by the German Reich in 1938, Lilia and her Jewish husband, Erik Skala, were forced to flee with their two children to the USA. Arriving as a complete unknown, Lilia had to start building her career all over again. In the end, however, thanks to her exceptional talent, Lilia Skala Sofia, now about 50 years old, managed to gain a foothold on Broadway and even in Hollywood. Her most successful film, Lilies of the Field, in 1963, earned her nominations for a Golden Globe and an Oscar. In 1991, the 95-year-old Lilia Skala Zofia appeared in the thriller Men of Respect. On the 18th of December 1994, this famous graduate of Dresden University of Technology died on Long Island, New York. Dagmar Sabados, Chemist and Mayor Dagmar Sabados guided the fortunes of the city of Halle from 1990 to 2012 as deputy mayor and mayor. But politics was only her second career. Originally a qualified chemist and graduate of Freiberg Mining Academy, her decades of experience in environmental matters also benefited her political activities. Dagmar Sabados was born near Zangerhausen in 1947. After high school, she began studying chemistry at Freiberg Mining Academy in 1966, graduating in 1971. Dagmar Sabados looks back on her studies with pleasure. The chemists of 1966 were a great bunch and we still meet up every year. We helped each other revise for exams and supported each other in the laboratory, scientifically and emotionally. We had good teachers, and the whole environment, including the lecture theatres, laboratories, dorms and refectory, was just right for us. The town of Freiberg also had everything students needed. After graduation, Dagmar Sabados became a research associate at first Freiberg Institute of Fuel, and later the District Hygiene Inspectorate in Halle. In 1990, she entered local politics, contributing her environmental experience. She was appointed Chair of Environmental and Municipal Affairs and also acted as an elected Deputy Mayor standing in for the Mayor. In 1994, her mandate was renewed and she was appointed Chair of Youth, Social Affairs and Health. In 2006, the people of Halle elected Dagmar Savados Mayor. The successes with which she is associated include the foundation and profiling of the municipal utilities, the refurbishment of schools and childcare centres, and the construction of various sports facilities. Being a university graduate, Dagmar Sabados was convinced that supporting higher education was especially important as an engine for successful urban development. Consequently, she was behind the expansion of the technology centre and incubator in Halle into one of the largest technology parks in eastern Germany. Politician and chemist Dagmar Sabados retired on the 1st of December 2012, but is still in close touch with the, now renamed, Freiberg University of Mining and Technology.
Ethel Smythe, composer and women's rights activist. Ethel Smythe's unique career was almost thwarted by her parents. Only thanks to her stubbornness did she manage to study at the Royal Conservatory of Music in far-off Leipzig. This exceptionally talented woman later devoted herself to writing and politics. She fought for women's rights in Britain together with the suffragettes. Born in Sidcup near London in 1858, Ethel Smythe grew up in a wealthy home. Through one of her governesses, who had studied at Leipzig Conservatory, Ethel came into contact with classical music early on, and also had the idea of studying music in Germany. Her parents were set against it, for at that time, music wasn't regarded as an appropriate career goal for girls of her standing. Ethel Smythe defied her parents and went on hunger strike. Out of concern for their daughter, they finally relented. And in 1877, Ethel Smythe began studying at the Royal Conservatory of Music in Leipzig, now the Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi University of Music and Theatre, attending, for example, piano and composition classes. In Leipzig, she was introduced to Clara Schumann, Max Friedländer, Edvard Grieg, and Johannes Brahms. She went on to enjoy success as a composer in both Britain and Germany. However, Ethel Smythe repeatedly encountered male prejudice and often felt like an outsider in the world of classical music. This is probably why she became involved in the British women's rights movement, for which she even composed an anthem. In 1912, she was jailed for two months for taking part in protests. In those years, Ethel Smythe increasingly devoted herself to writing. In her autobiographical works, she intimated that she was gay. Ethel had a very close friendship with Virginia Woolf. Despite the onset of deafness, Ethel continued composing. By the end of her long life, she had written six operas, several pieces for choir and orchestra, sonatas for chamber ensembles, and twenty songs with various accompaniment. Estelle Zanger, all-rounder and business manager of tomorrow. When Estelle Zanger was still at school, she had an ambitious plan to begin a new project every year. She started a debating club, staged two musicals, and taught herself four languages. As a student at the HHL Leipzig Graduate School of Management, She's already one of tomorrow's most creative entrepreneurs. Estelle Zanger was born in 1994 in Yaoundé, the capital of Cameroon. At the age of just 14, she graduated from an international school. She then studied marketing, business administration and commerce at the Catholic University of Central Africa in Yaoundé. In her spare time, Estelle Zanger honed her artistic skills. As a teenager, she wrote two 150-minute musicals, for which she alone selected the cast, secured funding, handled the marketing, and even appeared on stage herself. She also developed her own web series and launched a series of films about social problems at her university. In addition, she volunteered for charity projects. Needless to say, she graduated with flying colours. In 2015, Estelle Zanger went abroad. She began an MSc in Business Management at HHL Leipzig. In 2016, she spent a semester in Shenzhen, in China. She has taken a number of corporate internships, such as at Porsche in Leipzig. Estelle Zanger has received several awards and scholarships for her diverse professional and social dedication. After her studies, Estelle Zanger plans to campaign for employers to treat people and the environment more considerately and sustainably. Ursula Schubert, first female graduate and electrical engineer. When Ursula Schubert began studying at Midweider School of Engineering in 1948, she was a true rarity among her fellow students. She went down in the college's history as its very first female graduate. She was also her employer's first female engineer. She countered the prejudice of her male colleagues with her professional expertise. Ursula Schubert, née Weichelt, grew up in Chemnitz. 
When engineering schools began accepting students again after the war, she decided to study electrical engineering in her hometown and enrolled at Chemnitz Institute of Technology in 1947. Just one year later, she moved to the small town of Midweida, where she was able to continue her studies, albeit as the only woman among the 41 students on her course. No allowances were made for her. I was pushed just as much as my male colleagues. I had to work hard and sweated just as much as them during exams, she later recalled. In 1950, aged 20, Ursula Schubert became the first woman to graduate as a qualified electrical engineer from Mitfeider's School of Engineering. When she started her career, she had to learn something else, how to assert herself in the male-dominated world of engineering at the Chemnitz power plant where she worked. She used her professional skills to win over her male colleagues and she went on to spend 40 years in charge of network calculation, grid planning and future developments in the utility sector. In 1989, Ursula Schubert was awarded the Energy Industry Medal of Merit in gold. She retired a year later. The Exhibition Project The exhibition Hashtag Her Story, Saxony and its Female Academics, is a joint project by the Equal Opportunities Office of Leipzig University and Leipzig University Archive in conjunction with other Saxon higher education archives, colleges and universities, as well as the Coordinating Office for the Promotion of Equal Opportunities at Higher Education Institutions in Saxony. This exhibition would not have been possible without the kind support of the Saxon Ministry of Social Affairs and Consumer Protection and the Minister of Equality and Integration. The establishments of higher education participating in Hashtag Her Story are Leipzig University, Dresden University of Technology, Freiberg University of Mining and Technology, Medvida University of Applied Sciences, Dresden Academy of Fine Arts, Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdi, University of Music and Theatre in Leipzig, and the HHL Leipzig Graduate School of Management.